Hello fellow armsmen, I am Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie. So today we're going to be talking about maces. I've not got a mace, I can't afford one, but I've got a club and I can talk about their general principles. Now, in a lot of cases I'm going to be comparing the mace very directly with the arming sword because it helps to highlight the key differences and the key qualities, as well as the penalties, of using something like a mace or sometimes even things like warhammers and plaques and things, depending on individual little factors, compared with weapons with sharp edges and other alternatives like swords and axes and the rest. So, let's get started. So, firstly, let's look at some of the more obvious and some of the less obvious differences in terms of the fact that this is a blade. So, obviously, when you're impacting with something like a mace, it's going to be causing a blunt impact. When you're using something like a sword, it's going to be using a chopping sort of impact. Now we know that, but there are some extra advantages to using a sword as well. Because of this sharp edge, although on something like a mace or an axe, you've got a specific head, and you must hit with that area, or you're doing very minimal impact, you're not going to have much going on. The weight distribution on a sword is much closer to the handle, so that means that even if I'm making a bit of a mistake and I'm cutting a bit close to the handle, for example, maybe I'm cutting and I'm, you know, reposting, I'm sort of going around, my opponent is closing in a bit. If I'm making that contact, I'm making that chop even fairly close to the handle, it's not going to do as much of a chop because there's less force away from the tip, but it's still a sharp edge all the way along, and of course it's still going to have a significant effect on my opponent. With something like a mace or an axe, of course, that's not going to be the case. I need to hit with that end of the weapon. If I'm too close, or I'm misjudging my distance and timing and all the rest, that is not going to work properly, and I'll be doing minimal to no injuries whatsoever. Besides that, one advantage of the sword is using that sharp edge, just pretty much like a knife. With something like maces, I need to swing the weapon. I need to be hitting things. Now you'd think, oh well, swords are weapons, you need to do that as well. Not necessarily. If I've got a sword, and let's say, you know, we were binding, I was with my opponent, we were tightly ma manipulating, doing all kinds of things, and I didn't quite get a forceful cut, but I managed to place that blade on somewhere really good, like the neck, for example, I don't have to go, that's not good enough, pull back, and then chop again hard. I've got a sharp blade, so I can just go pull or push. And that sharp edge is going to slice into anything like sort of clothing, the skin, areas like arteries and the rest. And that's a significant advantage of the sword that you must remember you can't do with something like a mace. It means that the mace must be exclusively used to hit the opponent, which actually takes away several advantages and several opportunities you get from a weapon like a sword. Another thing to compare is how you're actually hitting and what's called edge alignment. Now with something like a sword, I've got here, of course, suffice it to say, if I do this, flat slap, it's going to do next to no injury, and with a full chop, with perfect edge alignment, it's going to do the maximum injury. But even slightly, even on a more subtle scale, and it's something you see with people who are uh, maybe used to swinging around, maybe in things like LARP, and you see them, you know, who are fairly adept at getting that, you know, judgement to make sure they're hitting the opponent. But when you see them doing things like test cutting, that's using a real sharp sword to do cutting on things like vegetables, fruit, bottles, things like that, you actually see that they struggle. They don't seem to be doing as much of a cut. And that's because their edge alignment, it may look like they're cutting fairly directly at the object, but their edge alignment is a bit off. And that is enough to make the difference between a very clean, deep cut that can chop right through something, and a cut that's a bit iffy, it cuts a bit into something and doesn't do nearly as much injury or damage to the object. Now something like a mace, we don't have that problem. Any amateur just needs to make sure they do get some sort of hit on the opponent. 
and then the rest is just pretty much how hard you're swinging and how fast you're making that weapon go. And that's a real advantage because someone who's a beginner, it may seem like it's really easy to just line up with a sword and just go chop. But when it's dynamic, when you're doing something like some sort of sparring or you're in some sort of duel with an opponent or self-defense or a battle, regardless, it's going to be more chaotic. The person's moving around, they're trying to defend, you're having to hit them from more sort of awkward angles and just try to get whatever you can manage. And that is where you really start to see things like edge alignment be off. So with something like a sword, it's a real struggle, and suddenly you've got the person who seems like they can chop something completely in half, suddenly actually only doing much more minor cuts and not doing nearly as much damage. So then, in that situation, the amateur swordsman is struggling a lot. Now an amateur maceman, I don't care about edge alignment or whatnot. Yes, it's not going to be quite as significant an impact if I'm swinging not completely straight with my arm, but it's a lot more forgiving. Even if I'm turned maybe 45 degrees, if I'm getting a good swing in, it doesn't matter. I'm smacking them perhaps in the head or breaking an arm or snapping a leg or something like that. I've got that impact, I make sure I've got the force going, and I can just swing around and pretty much just make sure I'm hitting in the first place and the rest is just done by the sheer force of the weapon impacting the opponent. So that makes the mace actually in that sense much better for beginners than swords because again swords are not forgiving if you haven't got perfect technique, you haven't got lots of practice in delivering those cuts whereas a mace it doesn't matter, it forgives you, you can just swing it and just make sure you're not dying first. Easy. Now I instinctively kind of showed it, even though I didn't say it earlier, with a sword, you can do things like manipulations with things like the quillens. Now this is something that you don't have on a mace. Now someone who's, you know, could tell you more obviously that the cross guard, a quillen, is going to protect your hands. So if someone's cutting, chop, and yes, it's a steel bar in the way of your hand getting split open. Excuse me, but apart from that, there are other things that you do with quillens. They don't just stop weapons from cutting you open or impacting you and crushing your fingers. They're there to deliberately use for, for <laughs> manipulation as well. So if I'm bound with someone, I could deliberately close in. I'm using the quillen to sort of push their sword or their other weapon out of the way. I'm then safe with the weapon locked onto mine and I can maybe hit them in the face of the pommel or turn around and cut them again or do other fancy things or uh, when you look at the treatises of Fiore de la Berry, there's one example called the exchanger thrusts where someone tries to go ha ha and stab you and then you just take the weapon and you deliberately guide it along on the quillens of your sword and then you well, you repost by going, ha ha, no you don't, and deliver a thrust back at them. And that sort of stuff you can't do with a mace. You don't have those bars to protect your fingers and to deliberately control an opponent's weapon. Controlling an opponent's weapon needs something to hook with. So if you've got something like a warhammer or an axe, you can use the top part. You're using that to drag things around. You can hook around the limbs, you can hook around the weapon, and you can do that sort of control. With something like a sword, you can use the quillens at the bottom to do the control at a much closer range. With a mace or a club, you can't do either of those things. You'd barely maybe be able to control the weapon slightly, but with the way mace heads and cudgels are designed, it would be very unlikely to properly control a weapon or a limb or something with the head you're more likely to just use it to smack things, like a mace is intended to do. Remember that maces are very good with things like shields. Now this is something that's actually a comparison rather than a contrast, to say that although I've just mentioned a whole load of differences between maces and swords, in this case they're fairly similar. These sorts of weapons that you'd use with a shield are very effective. So if I'm using a sword, I can chop, I can cut, I can thrust, I can do all those different things, and yes, I'll be fighting in a very different fashion if I'm using a sword, but with a mace, 
I can also use it very effectively of a shield. In this case, again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a lot more impacts and smacks, but I don't have to worry about things like a lack of quillens. I'm not going to get my hands chopped off if I'm doing things cleverly. If I've got a shield, I can make sure to protect my hand with it. So then, who cares about if you've got a basket hilt or a cross hilt or something to protect your fingers? You just have that shield and it's, you should be using it to protect your hands pretty much the entire time. So there are sometimes, depending on what you look at in terms of things like sword and buckler and treatises about using weapons with shields, admittedly predominantly using swords, but the same principle applies, there are situations where you either separate, so I might, for example, block high and attack low, so I'm separating the weapon and the shield, so I'm making sure the opponent, opponent's weapon is up around here, and then I know that this is now safe to attack elsewhere. Or I do it more tight, where I'm using the shield and the weapon in the same place. So maybe I'm attacking and blocking high, so I go, ha! Now yes, of course, my hands aren't completely safe, and an opponent might well be able to get around and do things to chop up the hands, but it's a lot more unlikely if I'm using the shield smartly. All I have to do is keep the weapon back, like this, in this what's called Guard the Lady, or up here in what's called the sort of Guard the Falcon, Again, same sort of thing as with a sword. You're keeping your hands back. You're not using it like a sabre or a rapier with your hand forward. So those fingers aren't going to get chopped off. You've got your weapon at a safe distance behind you, and then you just bring it forward when you need to. Like if you want to bind with an enemy's weapon, or if you just want to go straight for the kill and do that hit. That's fine, because you've got your weapon back to start with, and you've got a shield. A shield. Fantastic object. Thank God for its invention, right? And finally, of course, impact weapons are good against armour. If I've got something like a sword, there are ways to defeat armour, but they're very complex and they basically require doing stuff like what's called half-sorting, where you're deliberately manipulating the point and finely targeting gaps, like in the eye sockets, around the neck, under the armpits, all kinds of places. I've explained that in another video. But with something like a mace or a club, I don't mind whether you've got really tough armour. And indeed, I don't have to do it like in the movies where you're using that impact weapon to crush and crumple armour. It doesn't matter. Even if that armour is absolutely rigid, and no matter how hard you hit it, it stays completely straight, it's completely intact. All that matters is, I'm hitting the armour hard enough, and the force is going through, concentrated because the weapon with a head, and it does all that injury to someone underneath the armour. So you can have quite an, an enjoyable experience perhaps of, perhaps of looting, where you can be hitting the opponent's armour and it's intact, so when they're dead, you can loot it and it's completely perfect condition. You can sell it for all the best money, you can wear it without worrying about who's going to repair it and how much is it going to cost. The armor's fine, but in the meantime, I'm smacking that person and the person underneath the armor is having a horrible time and probably dying in the process. So yes, that's it on maces and clubs. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.